Hi, this is our first physiology lecture. This lecture is about the muscle physiology. First of all, you have to know that there are three types of muscles, skeletal, smooth and cardiac. The skeletal one is striated and voluntary. Striated means the actin and myosin filaments are regularly organized into a sarcomere inside the sarcoplasm. So, under microscope, they appear striated. Voluntary means that you can control its movements, when to contract and when to relax. For example, your leg muscles, muscles in your arm, all these muscles you can control. Smooth muscles. Unlike the skeletal ones, they are non-striated and they are involuntary. You cannot control them. Let's see an example. The GIT muscles. Muscles in your esophagus are smooth muscles. Muscles in the small intestine are also smooth muscles. So, any muscles that is not striated and you cannot control is organized as smooth muscles. Cardiac muscle is striated same as the skeletal muscles, but they are involuntary. Because these are the muscles of our heart. And this seems to be logic. You cannot control your heartbeats. Now, the characteristics of our skeletal muscles. They can institute for 45-50% to 50 of our total body weight. Under microscope, they appear multinucleated. And this means that they have more than one nucleus per cell. They are cylindrical in shape and have rapid constructions. Their activity, of course, depends on the nerve supply, which is a somatic nerve supply, since it's voluntary. And by the way, this is the only voluntary type of muscles in our body. Here is an important note. Skeletal muscles are attached to skeleton. And here from where they got their name. This occurs via the origin and insertion. But for each rule there is an exception. Our exception here is the external anus sphincter, orbicularis aureus and orbicularis oculi. The first one is shown here in the picture. Here is the rectum. Anus. The anus have two types of muscles, interior one and the exterior one. The exterior ones are skeletal muscles that la lack the origin or insertion. Orpicularis aureus muscles. This is a complex of muscles in the laps. They allow you to control your mouth movements. For example, during talking, eating. Orpicularis oculi, these closes your eyelids. And now you can understand why you can't control your eyelids. You can open your eye and close it. They are appear here in the picture. Now, let's see the functions of these skeletal muscles. First of all, they maintain our posture. So, if I'm standing, this is because of my skeletal muscles. They help in the venous return. But how does this happen? Okay, let's see. Here, our skeletal muscles are relaxed. So, these valves as you see here, they are closed. How are they closed? Once the blood enters this chamber, these packs of the valves are filled with blood, causing the valves to be closed. To ensure that the blood does not go away from the heart. Now, the skeletal muscles perform their action and contract. 
and valves are opened because of this pressure, helping the blood to return to heart. Then, they help in the hair production, and this is discussed in details in the biochemistry, of course, via glycolysis. They help us to perform voluntary movements, lifting my pack, running around the track, and so on. All these are voluntary movements, which we do using our skeletal muscles. Now, the last function of a skeletal muscle is storing nutrient reserves. Now we are gonna to know how it does this action. If my diet contains few proteins, the contractile pr proteins in the skeletal muscle, which I have mentioned before, the actin and myosin filaments, are gonna to be broken down. Their amino acids are then released into the circulation and the hepatocytes take up these amino acids to synthesize glucose by a process known as gluconeogenesis, which is also mentioned in the biochemistry. Remember that you have to integrate physiology with the biochemistry lectures. Our second muscle is the smooth muscle. As I mentioned before, they are non-striated and they are involuntary. Under the microscope, they appear as uninucleated, which means that each cell contains only one nucleus. They have a slow wave-like contractions, but what does this mean? Peristalsis. Peristalsis help us during eating to aid my food to reach the stomach via esophagus. This peristaltic action in the esophagus is known as slow wave light contractions. Here is our final part of the lecture, motor neuron pole. Look at this picture. In the spinal cord, there are posterior horn cells and anterior ones. from which each nerve starts from the anterior cell to reaching the motor in the blade and the muscle fiber they supply, we are gonna to name this root as motor yonic. So remember, the motor yonic is one anterior horn cell, its axon, and the muscle fiber supplied by this axon. Okay, let's return to this. Motor neural pole is the collection of the anterior horn cells that supply a specific skeletal muscle. And they are usually grouped together in one or two neighboring system segments. The structure, motor neonic which I have mentioned before, one anterior horn cell, its axon, and the muscle fiber supplied by this axon. So remember, motor unit is not the same as a motor neuron pole. These are important notes. One muscle may have many motor units of different fiber types. In muscles that perform fine movements, which does not a lot of energy, such as the muscles of my eye, each motor unit just contains three to six muscle fibers. In the muscle which perform gross movements, each motor unit consists from 100 to 200 muscle fibers. And the example is the muscles of the leg. Finally, each motor unit obeys the older non-law. What does this mean? This means 
that they act as a sensitian, as one unit. We are the same individuals. For example, if we are six individuals inside a room, if we pay all or non low, we are gonna to give the same reaction. We feel sad, the same, all of us do the same work with same intensity. So, this seems to be logic. During lifting your bag, it's not logic that your upper half of the biceps does not get the same action of the lower half. So we recognize here that the biceps muscle fibers act as a sensitium, obey all or non low. To summarize, motor unit considers the relationship between the muscle fiber and the nerve that supplies this muscle fiber. We reached the end of our lecture and I hope that you didn't find it difficult and good luck.